Dim the lights, cue the music, here we go. What's going on everyone in the VC, it's LJ. We wanted to try to shoot a new video tonight to kind of talk about a couple of different things. First was I found a few more Stones records that were out in the front listening room in the little orange um, bin or box. If you watch my music room tour, that's kind of the in rotation bin. But when I went through them for Jim and the Misses, I pulled them off the shelf and I knew there was a few that weren't in there. So I did grab them out of the front. They're here. A couple of them are pretty cool. Um, a live recording, and I want to show those to you. Uh, I do have uh, a vinyl finds of sorts to do as well. I haven't done one in a while. And this one has some pretty cool live stuff that I've picked up over the last couple of months from uh, Dylan and Neil Young, Tom Petty, and also just some standard studio uh, releases stuff I've been looking for for a while. And again, building up over the last couple of months. So, I mean, what are you going to do? Give me a break. Got to get it done. Background music is B.B. King and Eric Clapton's Riding with the King. Awesome CD. Just awesome CD. Uh, this was a yard sale find over the weekend for 50 cents. Super happy to find this. Killer CD. Okay, so an addendum to Jim and the Misses. Show me your stones. Here is Through the Past Darkly. This is what Big Hits Volume 2. I almost want to say High Tide Green Grass Volume 2, but it's not that. So there's Volume 2. That was in the front. And so were these next two, and I think that should do it for my Stones collection. This is a 12-inch promo. Not promo, a uh, 12-inch single. Orange vinyl. And this is Cocksucker Blues and Brown Sugar. Alternate version or different version of the song than is on the studio release. So, a very cool one that I didn't want to leave out just because it's neat to show and I haven't seen it. Um, I don't think anyone has shown this yet, so I wanted to make sure I got it in there. <laughs> That's one. And the second, this is Out on Bail from the 1978 US tour. This was recorded in Jersey. Jersey, Jersey, Jersey. Yeah, it's Jersey from the 78 tour. This was released on Lurch Records, the Red Label. So the greatest group on earth. Pretty good set list here. Um, so this was a fan club release uh, through Pop Music Fan Club Limited, Special Arrangement, Lurch Records. It does say that it contained two discs, a 12 inch and a 45 or a seven inch. I've never had the seven inch, but this is the 12 inch. Again, out on bail from the Stones. That is my addendum and my update to Show Me Your Stones. I swear, I'm done. Um, next thing is this white cover. It's a couple of them. Because they're live recordings. And these are... I wanted to share these with everyone. This first one, this is Neil Young. So this is a Neil Young recording from uh, the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion on February 1st, 1971. So that would make it right around the same time period as the Massey Hall release that just came out. And I am absolutely pining to get my hands on a copy of that. I saw one at Newberry Comics over the weekend. I think it was uh, 40 bucks. So this has fantastic labels. Side one, and side two, <laughs> like any good live record. But I just thought it would be cool to show. It was a recent pickup within the last couple of months. Uh, it sounds great. It sounds like a great live recording. I mean, the over-the-top production's not there, but it's not a commercial release. But it's just a really rock-solid sound early uh, recording from Neil Young in 71. And again, anything around that Massey Hall recording time period is just definitely of interest. And I really have to add that to the list, picking that up. Uh, second one. This is another one for the Dylan collection of live recordings. And this is Live at the Pit Stop, Gaza Strip, in 78. And you have this superimposed picture of uh, Dylan in the car there. I forget the woman's name. Is it Dorothy? I don't know. Leave me a comment. So, pretty good set list. And this is on colored vinyl, which is why I wanted to show you this. Again, with those fantastic labels, side one, or side two, and side one on red vinyl. So a pretty cool pickup. This is at the Gaza Strip again, or live at the Pit Stop Gaza Strip. And again, the same thing with the sound quality as on the um, the Neil Young recording. You know, overall, a rock solid uh, recording. Audio capture is good. Add this to the collection with the other half dozen or so uh, Dylan live recordings. But still fantastic, pretty cool piece. 
really excited to show that. I guess that's not worth blaking or putting a sleeve on. Not gonna damage the artwork there. Uh, this is the last live one. I'm not a huge Tom Petty fan by any means. Uh, Renee is a huge Tom Petty fan. But seeing the Florida Flash live in 87, Tom is fantastic live. Uh, Renee's seen him live a few times. I haven't. But great set list from Tom. And again, 87 was a pretty good period for Tom. And this is on the federal label. So again, another live recording from Tom Petty. It's the first one that I have. I have, I think, all of Tom's studio LPs uh, up through Full Moon Fever, I should say. I don't have anything after that. Um, but the five or six that came before that, or seven that came before that. So this is the first live one on vinyl. And again, I don't see this around too often, so if it had to be grabbed, the Florida Flash live in what is this Pensacola Jacksonville Coliseum. Sorry, Florida's Florida. Sorry, David. Ha! Beach Boys Smile. This is the '83 version. <laughs> the Smile Sessions. Man, what a jigsaw puzzle those suckers are. Uh, the first of two Beach Boys records I want to show. This one came with a really cool write-up that kind of does a whole warning before you even play this, please read these notes. And it goes on to explain how the smile sessions from the late 60s never materialized into anything, although they were meant to, it just didn't happen. So at this point in 1983, this was a collection of material that could be found from those sessions, including some really raw demos and early mixes, and Brother Records went ahead and issued the 1983 version of what could have, would have, should have been the Smile album. Of course, in the 25, 7, 6, 7, 30, something, whatever years that have passed, the Smile sessions have been released, the album has been finished, and so forth. But kind of a cool snapshot in time, and, and definitely not something that I see out there often. So again, had to be had, the 83 version of Smile. And the audio quality really varies here, and that little inner note paper, <clears throat> Excuse me. It alludes to that. It even says, I mean, hey, watch out. You're listening to an early demo with raw guitars and misplaced leads on, um, what, Do You Like Worms? It's, no, Good Vibrations, sorry. Alternate demo of Good Vibrations. So don't expect it to be A-plus in all areas. It's, it's pretty cool. Definitely cool as far as stuff you don't see every day. This one completely blew me away. I've been really inspired by Rob uh, in Boston, Panique's 1960, for those that aren't familiar, or those that choose to watch this video in five years from now, and who knows where we all are. Um, Rob's been doing a lot of listening to Surf's Up. Anybody that follows my channel or whatever, you'll know that bands, you know, early periods of like bubblegum type music don't do much for me. It's their later periods that, um, when they kind of mature and start doing different things that really, really turn me on and really get to me. The Beatles, the Beach Boys, so many like that. And Holland from the early 70s, I think this is 73, 72, does the same thing. And this came with uh, a bonus 7 inch, which is still here, which was really cool. So Mount Vernon in the fairway. So the 7 inch is still there, it's in fantastic condition. And this was just really a great, great, great album. I'm just not a big fan of their surf rock period, so I'll usually pass by and ignore that stuff. I probably have a few that are just in the overflow piles. But this later stuff, and now I really need to get surf up, which I don't have. And cool bit on the cover, if you're not aware, if you turn it upside down, it's the canal in, I guess it's Holland, and that's a, a boat on the canal. Killer LP, check it out. If I have to give you a song to check out, uh, they wouldn't be listed on the back, so whatever. First song, side one, killer stuff. Peter Frampton's Wind of Change. This is one of um, three now that I don't have. So I grabbed this to add to the Frampton collection, and I played it last night. This is Frampton's first solo LP after leaving Humble Pie, and man is it good. Before Frampton Comes Alive or his later stuff, his new album I should check out. I haven't yet, that came out last year. But man, if you're a fran, fan, fran of Frampton's, fram, blah, blah, if you like the way Peter plays guitar, that guitar tone that he gets, damn, is this for you. This was just smoking. So a little less rocky than Humble Pie, which is what Peter was looking for at that point from the research I did. Uh, and a little more peeled back, but it still rocks. Damn, was that a good record. Highly recommended. 
Here's one that I've been looking for and trying to pick up forever in nice shape. This is the band's music from Big Pink. I'm so happy to find this. It's just, it's been a hunt. A hunt. And this is in fantastic shape. This is, I'm not your pressing guy, but I know a later pressing when I see one. So here's a later purple capital pressing. But it's just stone mint. And I love this album. I have just, I've refused. You know, so many times I've seen it. 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, and the condition's just not there. And man, you know, we all know enough about this. The Dylan painted cover, the band being their backing band, and the recent loss to how the band's lineup live on. Had to have it. So happy. So happy. A bit of a grail for me, or a unicorn. <laughs> a unicorn. And I also grabbed the last waltz. Now, I think with that, I have everything the band released. The last waltz, um, a four LP set. Let's see if I can fan them out and make them look really neat. One, two, three, four. Uh, so a four LP set. This is the band's farewell concert from 1976 on Warner. Very, very competent. I haven't heard this in a long time. I think as a teenager I heard the whole thing, so it's been a while. It's a hell of a commitment, man. Four records? I'm happy to own it and I'll listen to it, but it's not going to happen all at once. And what a set list. I mean, check it out. Neil Young, Muddy Waters, Ringo Starr, Van Morrison, Joni Mitchell, Bob Dylan, Neil Diamond, Eric Clapton, Paul Butterfield. And it was LeVon Helm that recently passed away. Fantastic. Happy to have it. Oh, wow. We're moving through these. Just a couple more. Two ads for my uh, Dylan 60s collection that I didn't have before. And I think this completes it except for Blonde on Blonde. John Wesley Hardy. Listen to this a couple of times. Really, really good album. Not my favorite from the 60s. Fantastic. And Nashville Skyline. Now this I absolutely love. Lay Lady Lay is on this, right? I believe so. Lay Lady Lay is just a brilliant Dylan song. I love it. And there's no comparison, but Duran Duran does a stellar cover of that song. you got to check it out. Just, it's really ethereal and sweeping. And Pudsy, if you're watching, I won't start singing Rio at you tonight. But, check out Duran Duran's cover version of Lay Lady Light. It's so damn good. And so is his album. So now as far as um, 60s Dylan, I really just have Blonde on Blonde. And I think that's it. And, I found a really dirty copy of King Crimson, Starless, and Bible Black. Doesn't it always go that way? Now the nice thing is, the original inner is here. The vinyl is mint. And what a killer record. I had not heard this. Woohoo! I loved it! Not quite in the court of the Crimson King, but not bad. But I mean, look at this. Don't make white album covers, especially textured. I'm just gonna soak shit up all day. It's all taped. Check this out. Check out that tape. Woo! That's taped. But. This is, I think this is my fourth King Crimson album. Now, I was really late to the King Crimson game, excepting um, in the court of the Crimson King. It's kind of a high school rite of passage, uh, at least in the US, anyways. I'm not sure about in Europe or the UK. This thing won't even go into the sleeve, right? It's so beat up. Hence, keeping the album behind it. But this was a fantastic album. Definitely check it out. My first exposure ever to them was in the Court of the Crimson King. And that's the one that um, Sublime Media Jonas holds over his face. And that is just, that'll take your mind and warp it. This is a lot easier to listen to. It may have been a really much better starting point. And I found that at the thrift store for 50 cents. And second, I've had this for quite a while. This is Frigid Pink's Defrosted. I thought to grab this because somebody just recently showed, were you just getting a bad glare there? This is the light. And this like metallic cover. Frigid Pink's Defrosted was super cool. I have their first release, the Pink uh, self-titled debut. Stellar LP, Defrosted, I believe is the follow-up. And man, is it every bit is good. I had the original inner sleeve, which I thought was super cool. And custom labels. So it was mint condition, great, great, great shape, great price. Um, Frigid Pink, again, I got into super late. I think it was Punk Texas. I am name dropping everyone tonight. 
um, that showed it as uh, his pink pink pick. And I had only heard them in passing a song here or there. Then I went out and found um, their debut LP, the pink cover. It was up on the shelf, been facing for a while. And now I have the Frosted. I think there's only a couple more to get after this. Let me know, leave me a comment. But this was just killer 70s rock. And if you dig that early 70s garage rock, um, Cold Blood maybe, without the Janis Ian type, uh, Janis Joplin, Janis Ian type influence, grab it, cool stuff. That is it for me for now. I might come back and make another couple of videos. I mean, I'm still looking at stuff I have to show you guys that I've picked up that I'm just super excited about and I've been listening to. We'll take 30 seconds and do a few more right now. John Cale, Guts. Check that out. How can you not love John Cale in a hockey mask? It's a compilation from the late 70s. Oh man, great stuff. John Cale from the Velvet Underground. This record's a little scary. I mean, this is on Antilles. This is John Cale on Full Out Cocaine Binge. I mean, it's noise rock, velvet underground, all, all that stuff. When it shines, and does it shine? And when it's noisy and a little distracting, it's noisy and a little distracting. Great record. And two more. I didn't have either one of these. I found New York Dolls, their debut. Who could believe that guy would later on to go sing a song called How You Like It? Hop, 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 Buster Poindexter, Poindexter, aka David Johansson. Still very cool. I love this record. And being a Kiss fan, you know, they always cite the New York Dolls as one of their biggest influences. What was it that blew my mind? I had the cassette of this, I think, in junior high. I might have taken it from my brother. Frankenstein, what a monster of a song. And you gotta hear it in its entirety. Find a New York Dolls, just early New York glam rock, early 70s, proto-punk, before there was a Ramones, before there was a Sex Pistols, there was a New York Dolls, and this is their follow-up, too much, too soon, and I mean, without, I mean, the New York Dolls were the template, template, template for the Clash, the Ramones, uh, the Sex Pistols, there's a lot of great info online about how they tried to model the Sex Pistols right after the New York Dolls, and how Johnny Rotten didn't like that very much. This, just a little better produced. This sounds a little more raw. Both fantastic albums. All right, song's ending, so is this video. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm off to catch up on your videos, and I'm sure I'll shoot some more soon. Some threads to catch up on and so forth. Hope everyone's doing well. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.